Okay. Uh, aloha, happy day, everyone. Happy, happy day. Be in love with yourself. Thank you very much. My name is Omar. Thank you for being here. Coming at you guys from West Coast, British Columbia, Canada. And we continue our NDE series. And that is uh, very exciting. It's one of my favorite topics. Uh, it's uh, so diverse and so deep and uh, so many rabbit holes and you just learn so much from listening to all of the NDE experiencers that it really makes your mind go wow. And uh, that's kind of what pushes me forward on uh, a daily basis on things that make me go wow. And uh, NDE is definitely one of those uh, subjects because it's just so diverse and so vast and everyone has a unique experience within themselves. And, uh, you know, there are some underlying parallel lines to some experiences, but, you know, 99% of the time it's unique and 99% of the time it's involved with love. So, you know, I'm, uh, you know, just grateful. Thank you, Kathy, for uh, co-organizing and putting all this together for us so that we can raise our awareness and, uh, you know, be better people for tomorrow and continue to raise awareness across the globe and be seed dreamers all over the planet. And that's really what the goal here is. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you, Omar. Thank you so much, because I love co-creating with you. And I'm so excited about getting more of this information out and these beautiful guests that we have that really have a different perspective of the reality we're in than most people. They've experienced something supernatural, maybe, or paranormal, and they've um, been able to reach a different aspect of themselves from it. And it, it, it's a, a step towards higher consciousness. So they're a guide for us. Each one of them has a, a little piece of it. And the more that I listen to these amazing speakers that are in our lineup, um, what I find is I start to pick up language um, because I most of this is a feeling mm -hmm. more than it is a cognitive expression. So that's part of the excitement is that each person seems to have a little piece of the puzzle that helps us understand ourselves and the world we live in better. That's right. The old nature of reality, right? That we're all trying to understand why are we here? Where do we come from? And what happens um, after we've been here and when we transist into the next uh, phase or back to source or back to our natural self, who knows, right? But that's really the question that we all ask at some point in our lives. And some people live in fear of it and uh, some people don't care. And uh, one of the things I find from all of these NDE exper experiencers is that they have really no sense of fear anymore. And they can go forth and do what it is that they're going to do because they've overcome that sense and they know what is to come in, uh, you know, after this is over. So they really have a, you know, a head start on the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's a... Um it's a gateway for all of us. I mean, we've called these dialogues, the NDE dialogues of eternal consciousness. And what we're all given the opportunity is to see through other people's eyes and maybe pick up on who we really are and how we can live a better life in joy and love for everyone around us. And you can still have a, a critical eye, you can still be in learning mode, but you don't really have to be in fear. That mm -hmm. That is exactly what I'm hoping that we're doing all this week is expressing the divine ways that people show up. It's amazing. That's right, I really like that point. And also to say, uh, don't be shy to uh, reach out to any of these speakers, you know, via their websites or YouTube channels, Facebook, you know, whatever. Uh, if you're uh, looking for some guidance or looking for some answers or anything like that, because this is resource based. 
right? We just don't want to, you know, just throw anything up on the screen for someone to consume. You know, the, the intention behind it is to be resourceful and to help people. And uh, this is really why we're doing this is to, uh, you know, really uh, add to that volume of uh, what's really out there to help people. Well, I want to let you know that this um, next, our next guest, Dr. Pamela Durali, is one of my favorite people that I get to work with. And she has had a, um, uh, she did not have a near-death experience that we know of, but she had a spiritually transformative experience where she had the opportunity to experience 15 different lifetimes oh, in wow. less than two hours. So she's going to explain that. So once you get the lessons, mm -hmm. can you, I mean, oh my gosh, how disorienting um, can that be? So yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that. I'd be like, I'd be confused as hell for like many years. I'd be like, who am I? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I mean, people have won of those experiences and they talk about it for the next 10 years. So, I mean, she's had, she's got a connection to a higher knowing much more than almost anybody I know. So that's why I'm so excited to introduce her to everyone. She's an incredible guide for everyone. Nice, really looking forward to uh, conversing yeah. with uh, Dr. Girali, but quickly, uh, let's uh, run down on uh, what's happening and who's speaking this week. Uh, I'd like to throw uh, a huge shout out to uh, Trisha Barker for uh, her wonderful, wonderful uh, discussion and conversation with us yesterday. And uh, today we have uh, Dr. Pamela Girali and uh, Kathy, maybe you want to pick up on uh, the next few speakers. Okay. The next one is Peter Panagor, who is, uh, uh, he was a minister, a, uh, he's a mystical scholar, and you'll love, love, love his presentation. Um, the next one is Jose Hernandez, and he actually lives near Omar, so maybe they'll get to meet. And Jose was a regular guy working, um, I think he was a civil engineer or something like that. And he had a near-death experience and now he's an, a world famous artist. It's amazing. And then Brooke Grove. Brooke Grove is a beautiful, beautiful being. She's like a shamanic um, traveler. And again, she used her near-death experience to figure out how to help more and more people with trauma and after effects of trauma. But she she's magical. You'll see. She's quite magical. And then my buddy, Caroline Chang. Um, Caroline Chang is... Um, uh, actually, we talk like once a week. So <laughs> um, she is a, a spiritual guide. She lost her son, um, uh, her, her adult son, um, not that long ago. And then she was connected to him. And she'll explain it. She was in a movie where they um, actually um, focused on her story because her son is showing up in word and visuals. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a Netflix film. You'll have to hear. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And it's about oneness. And then we get to do all of the panelists all together. Everybody's going to be together and you'll see the beautiful heart space that mm -hmm. this all creates. And um, it'll be interesting to see Omar, which questions we, after doing this all week, we come up with um, and we get from the audience that helps us define and and increase everyone's uh, knowledge of this and enjoyment of this. Mm -hmm. subject. It's going to be great. And uh, guys, uh, this is the uh, book Angels in the OR by uh, Trisha Barker that uh, spoke yesterday and uh, check that out. So uh, let's uh, bring our uh, speaker on, Kathy, or uh, you got the hard copy of that book. I got the hard copy of her, of Pamela Girali's book. It's The Dance of Ego in Essence, Confessions oh, nice. of a Divine Diva. It's fantastic. Nice, nice. Let's uh, bring... I don't know. I should have the picture up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So very quickly, uh, Dr. Pamela Girali, Girali, a visionary and pioneer in spiritual growth and transformation. Dr. Pamela Girali shares life 
life-changing experiences and insights with clarity and humor. She captivates readers and audiences with wisdom and practical guidance from the blueprint for the human spirit. Her holistic model for consciousness, compassionate living, she is an architect for the human spirit. Pamela is a registered nurse with a master's degree in public health and a doctorate in holistic health sciences. She is uniquely qualified to present teachings from the blueprint since it involved in harmony with her transformation. She utilizes her creativity and amazing gifts to encourage others to live authentically and purposefully in alignment with their inner truth. Her transforming experiences and training background in nursing allow her to speak from the heart with authority. She is the best-selling author of The Dances of Ego and Essence, Confessions of a D Divine Diva, Embrace Your Divine Inner Diva, a 40-day journaling exercise to merge ego and essence and higher tea, the essence of joy. Beautiful. I love that. Let's bring uh, Dr. Jarali on. Hello, Hi. welcome, it is Dr. So nice Girali. Thank you. It is so nice to be with you and to participate in this amazing uh, series this week. Thank you so much, Omar and Kathy, for doing this. I'm looking forward to actually meeting all of these people at IANS. My husband and I are on our way in an RV, <laughs> making our way to Salt Lake City. So it's quite exciting. Nice. That is a total adventure. And uh, how long is your journey? <laughs> well, it's about 8,000 miles total by the time oh. we get back home to Naples, Florida. So it's quite, oh, quite wow. an adventure. <laughs> nice. Good for you guys to uh, to do that. That's excellent. I wish I could go on an adventure like yeah. that right about now. <laughs> <laughs> So well, go ahead, Kathy, uh, you know, introduce us to uh, Dr. Girali, and uh, okay. we have a presentation that uh, we're also uh, going to get to enjoy. So uh, let's uh, dive in. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. So, so Dr. Pamela, you'll just have to tell me when you want me to bring the slides up, but let's, let's start first so that people understand um, your quest to bring this tool, which you call the blueprint for the human spirit. Could you tell them a little bit about how you received that first? And then, then we'll talk about your, your experiences. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I was raised in a very small town in a very conservative home and church. And so my background is quite limited because it was very fundamental. And I left that behind when I went to college and became a nurse and pursued an amazing career in nursing and public health. I had many uh, interesting leadership experiences, including working for the American Cancer Society and the uh, Prevent Blindness America, where I was the program director for the whole country. And it was during that last um, part of my career in nursing and public health that I had a life-changing experience. I was given the opportunity to go to the Center for Creative Leadership in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I did visioning and journaling for the first time. And as a result of that, when I went back to work, I realized that my job was no longer compatible with my new vision. So I left my career and pursued a spiritual path. So I was very uh, happy for that life-changing experience because everything changed for me. And I became a spiritual junkie where I read every book I could read. I went to every workshop that I could attend, listened to the teachings of masters past and present, and tried all the different ways that we were encouraged to find ourselves and find our way. And it was very hard for me because I was so fearful. I was raised in this environment where I called it the unholy trinity of guilt, shame, and fear that limited me in so many ways. And so I was afraid to follow any of these teachings for fear that I would be led down the wrong path. And eventually, after a few years, I was given a gift of the blueprint for the human spirit. I would be awakened at 3.30 in the morning and for about an hour and a half, 
information would flow in and I lay there and try to remember as much as I could. Then I get up and enter it into my computer. Well, this happened for three to four days a week for six months. And the blueprint began as a simple mind, body, spirit triangle, and it kept growing and emerging in harmony with my own transformation. Until now, I have this beautiful matrix, the blueprint for the human spirit that has 15 dimensions and uh I'm sorry, five dimensions and five fields of existence. So, Kathy, if you'd like to bring that uh, image up so everybody can see what I'm talking about, I think it would be helpful. There we go. The next one, please. There we go. There we go. This is what the blueprint looks like in its very basic format. There's the physical, mental, emotional, intuitive, and spiritual dimensions, and then the quantum, personal, social, global, and eternal realms of being. And each one of the cells in the matrix presents an opportunity for us to learn and grow and ultimately to put it all together because each of the columns and each of the rows reflect different uh, parts of our being and, and also answered many questions that I had on my spiritual journey. I discovered who I am and why I'm here and where I came from and how I get back there. So there were so many different things that the blueprint offers. And it evolved, like I said, in harmony with my personal growth, mm -hmm. but it's also compatible with ancient teachings and new science, Eastern philosophy and Western psychology. It is about our inner landscape and consequently it is a valuable tool from, for spiritual students from all faiths. So it's not a religion, but it is a guide for how we can live more authentically and more consciously and compassionately. So I would encourage everyone to explore this. In fact, on my website, drpamelagirali.com, on the homepage, you can download a free booklet about the blueprint and it includes this chart in it. So it'll be, I, I know it will be helpful to you because it certainly guided my personal transformation over many years. Well, the blueprint for me was a very interesting intellectual exercise because I'm very rational and logical. In fact, I believe that all the pieces of the puzzle came to me so that I could put it together in a rational uh, chart that appeals to the left brain, so to speak. And so at this time in my learning and in my development, when the blueprint had first emerged, it was a very exciting, interesting intellectual exercise. But it wasn't until I experienced in meditation 15 past lives in an hour and a half that the blueprint shifted totally for me. It became a part of me. It came to life and I was able to integrate it fully into my way of being. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the experience that I had as I was meditating and 15 past lives appeared. I mean, I experienced them. So Kathy, if you'll move uh, forward, this is a chart that shows the 15 different past lives or archetypes that That's I awesome. I was hoping, I was so waiting for this. This is uh, one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, um, at that time, I didn't know what archetypes were, I, and I certainly wasn't really tuned in to all the symbolism that is present in each of their stories. But in an hour and a half, uh, and, and I'll preface this by saying, I'm not really good at meditation because I'm quite hyper and I like to talk. <laughs> and um, so consequently, I, I was so surprised that within a few minutes of sitting on my lanai one Sunday morning, I went into a deep state. And one after the other, I experienced these 15 past lives. 
And they were men, women, and children from all walks of life. And they spanned the ages from ancient Mayan times to more recent 1900s. Um, and I didn't just hear about their stories. And I had heard about a couple of these people when I had spoken with intuitives in the past or prior to this time, but they told me about them. And the difference when someone tells you about an experience like, like a past life, it's very different from actually experiencing a dramatic event in the lives of these people. So if you can imagine sitting on your lanai in this beautiful uh, morning rain and all of a sudden uh, dying and being uh, treated horribly in some instances by uh, encountering just unbelievable trauma and elation in some cases, it, it just was so powerful that I wasn't um, able to contain myself. <laughs> but I came to, after about an hour and a half, ran into my office and wrote in my journal a couple of lines about each of these 15 people. And I didn't know how many there were actually at the time. And um, I didn't write them down in order at which I experienced them, which I cannot even remember at this point. But I wrote them in the order in which they appear in the chart, which was very interesting because I went to church that Sunday morning and my friend looked at me and she said, what on earth happened to you? And I couldn't even speak because I was so overwhelmed by what I had experienced. But she said, go home and write it, write it all down, everything that you can remember. And I did, and I'm so thankful that my friend encouraged me to do that because in eight hours, I captured the essence of the experience that I had with these 15 different people. But I also learned so many other things as I, remembered about them and wrote their stories and I put them in a chart form, I realized that there was one past life or archetype for each of the 15 primary boxes in the blueprint matrix. So this was not just haphazard. It was not just something that occurred, but very intentional on the part of the higher powers that be that opened my eyes that morning. So there were 15 and they all fit into the matrix. They also, each one of them, reflected an aspect of my life today. So I believe that past lives really do reflect something relevant to the present. It's not just about the past. And unlike some people who, <laughs> that is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it? It is. It very is. And <clears throat> I've often wondered, Dr. Jarelli, is uh, could past lives be happening simultaneously and the memory and the experience is bleeding through into this mm -hmm. one and then our experience into theirs? Because uh, yes. you know, the linear time, past, present, and the future is all happening at the same time. Exactly. So I, I wonder, what do you think about that? <laughs> well, I do think that everything is kind of emerging, you know, all at once. And we experience in the, our human form time uh, over, you know, as it flowing. But I think it's only and always about now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, the past. The present kind of deal, right? <laughs> like, about... Yeah. Exactly. It is about the present. Now, another thing that I discovered as I put all of these individuals into these beautiful, coherent boxes, so to speak, these cells of the matrix, I realized that not only do they reflect specific aspects of the blueprint, they reflect a core shifting consciousness, something that we have to master, so to speak, as we grow and learn and emerge um, and develop 
ourselves as the conscious beings that we were born to be. Another interesting factor was that all the people in the personal field, the row in the top row were victims and they were treated horribly, abused. I mean, it was just unbelievable to, to go through the experience of, of being brought like the sacrificial virgin to uh, the altar where she would be um, killed in a sacred ritual or to be a child who was deaf and dumb, unable to speak. And I don't know about uh, maybe Omar, you may not uh, remember this, but I'm sure Kathy does how we were taught as children that little girls in particular are to be seen and not heard. And so that was something that I related with that uh, deaf and dumb child back from the colonial days. I mean, each one of these people were just treated so horribly in that very first uh, personal realm. Um, in this, under the spiritual dimension, there was a catatonic girl who was split from reality. She was separate from her higher self. And certainly um, that's something that we often have to reconnect with the essence of our being, with the truth of our being in the learning process. So again, all the people in the personal um, field were victims. In the social realm, they tried hard, failed mostly, you know, they, they did their best, but they hadn't got it yet. They were using their own ego effort to make a difference. And sometimes we need more than just our effort, our ego effort to make things happen, to make a difference. And certainly we can talk about some of those characters too, but they struggled also. And then in the global realm, they got it. These individuals had evolved to the point where they were able to live in harmony with nature. They were connected with all others, with their higher self. They lived purposefully and they uh, were conscious creators, so to speak. So those were the 15 um, archetypes that I experienced. And we'll talk a little bit about those more. Um, if you want to uh, change the slide, Kathy, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how I was able to analyze these different um, uh, archetypes. So as I mentioned, in the personal field, they were all powerless victims and they were kind of focused inward on themselves, but they were, you know, part of the past. And in the social field, uh, well, first of all, those powerless victims, things happen to them beyond their control. So that is kind of where we all start as where we have to learn how to uh, shift out of that victimhood. And certainly I think this process helps uh, looking at this and studying this. Then the second group in the social field were ego-driven failures, so to speak. And things happened by their own effort or didn't happen, so to speak. And that is the next phase of the spiritual evolution that we go through. Where, where we stand up for ourselves and make a difference because we're no longer a victim. We take control, so to speak. The next group in the global field were living in harmony with others and they lived purposefully and were conscious co-creators. And this spiritual evolution is the point at which we link in with the higher powers that be, so to speak, and things happen with us or through us. We're like vessels, participants in this creative process. And then there is a fourth uh, eternal field, and I'll speak about this a little bit later too, because there is a 16th archetype 
And that was also a very powerful experience that I had shortly afterwards. But in this phase where we discover our essence and we express it through our humanity, so to speak, we show up as the hands and the heart and the voice of God. And this is a perfect way to experience and understand how we evolve spiritually using all the archetypes that I experienced and uh, putting them into the framework of the blueprint for the human spirit. So um, I don't know whether uh, Kathy or Omar, you might have a comment about this process or not, but um, before we go on, if there was anything you wanted me to explain a little more, I would be glad to do that. No, no, I'm, uh, I'm catching pretty good so far and I'd love to hear some more so that I can some connect dots. It. Yeah, so okay. I can connect dots in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Kathy, if you'll move to the um, next slide. Um, okay. Um, perhaps if you can go back two slides to the archetypes I just want to, there, there we go. So I thought I would just, as an example, explain the three archetypes in the physical dimension. And those are in the columns where we go from being a victim to being ego driven you know, towards success to being conscious co-creators. And the three people that I experienced were first the sacrificial virgin, then the impoverished mother, and then an Indian shaman. Now, the sacrificial virgin is interesting because my husband and I were visiting Tulum. And as we were walking around that the ruins, I felt like I had been there. I felt like I had been, you know, I, I felt a sense of where my home was and where the altar was. And it was interesting because the sacrificial virgin that I experienced in this um, past life experience was from the Mayan times. She was 13, had been raised for this particular moment in her life. And she was to be given to the high priest as a sacrifice on her 13th birthday, which was the um, winter solstice. Now, my birthday is the 22nd of December, so it's quite interesting that uh, it coincided practically with her birth and death. But she was raised by her mother, who, who got a lot out of the fact that this that her daughter was chosen and her daughter just wanted to play but she was pampered um and she just wanted to be with her uh, friends and siblings but her mother just was moving her toward this pivotal moment in her life and this young gal did not know what was happening. She was not aware that she was going to die on her birthday, um, but she was led by her mother and her the rest of her family to this point where the altar was, where the light shone through in a particular moment of sunrise. And she, uh, at that moment, felt like she had been betrayed but if you look at our lives, when we turn 13, that is considered to be the age of accountability. Um, in many cultures and many faiths, there are celebrations for that particular moment in our lives. And symbolically speaking, a death is representative of a change, of transformation. It, it doesn't necessarily mean a death. When we dream or when we have a vision and there is a death in it, it usually is means a transformation. And so, but in this particular case, this gal, uh, it was her death 
but certainly we have to die to the old before we can embrace the new. And when we transform our lives, certainly that is an experience that we uh, have to deal with. We have to let go of a lot of things in order to move forward. And also at age 13, that age of accountability, where we should be at a point where we can take care of ourselves, where we become accountable for our own uh, well-being, so to speak. And so the key that this particular uh, past life reflects to us is that we need to take good care of ourselves first. That is most important because if we don't, then we will never be able to fulfill our higher purpose. We will never be able to help others. We will never be able to fulfill um, uh, uh, our mission in life to live compassionately and consciously. But that is the message and the core shift in consciousness that is relevant to that particular um, archetype and that particular past life that I experienced. So she was a victim, so to speak, but reflected an important part of our personal um, human development. Now, moving on below this uh, gal is the impoverished mother. From I'm just, uh, yes. Dr. Torelli, I'm just wondering about the uh, sacrificial virgin is that uh, at the moment of her death, um, do you recall that or, you know, the feeling, the emotional betrayal as you're, yes. as you were saying, like, do you feel that like currently when you were going through that experience? Oh, I felt so betrayed um, in that moment because my mother was turning me over, was giving me away to these high priests who, when I realized they were going to harm me. Uh, and so I was very, I mean, it was so um, impactful. I mean, it was, I was angry and grieving because I had been betrayed. But again, at that point in our lives, our mothers should turn us over to our higher priest, our higher self, so that we can be conscious that we can take care of ourselves. And so it's symbolic of us maturing and taking responsibility for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Very good point there. I like that. So the impoverished mother I had heard about from a woman I had uh, seen. She was a medical intuitive years ago before I became a medical intuitive myself, but I had um, met with her about a health issue and she gave me some guidance. Then she said, do you have any questions? And I said, well, I would be curious to know why I chose in this lifetime not to have children. I've had a career and I've done many things and I'm married to a man with two beautiful daughters and we have a granddaughter who's married and three great grandbabies. But in my human life, I did not have children. And so I asked her why. And she looked at me and she goes, well, in a former life, you lived in poverty in Appalachia. You went through three husbands who all died, had 22 children, most of whom died, and you grieved so intensely. And it was so uh, difficult of a life that you said, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> so I thought, wow, well, in my meditation, where I experienced 15 past lives, this impoverished mother was there. And I remember uh, feeling as if I was lying on a cot. And when I woke up and I opened my eyes, there were all these little dirty urchin faces, all these children were hanging over me, uh, looking at me as if I was going to die or something, uh, you know, looking at me so hopeful because they were hungry. And I mean, they were so 
They were just hanging over me, worrying about me. As And at that point, I was concerned about feeding them and trying to sustain them over the harsh winter that was coming. And so it was a grieving that I experienced and a sense of failure because I hadn't protected all my children. And I knew that um, I, we probably weren't gonna make it through the winter. But what this impoverished mother, the lesson that I learned from her is that we are to nurture and protect those in need to the best of our abilities. And sometimes we do better than other times, but um, she certainly was uh, challenged and grieved for that very intensely. So um, <clears throat> that was the uh, second uh, archetype in this triad of the physical dimension. And so Kathy, if you want to move forward two slides, the third person was Tanate, an American Indian shaman. And I had met up with this gentleman also in the past. Uh, first of all, this picture of him was drawn by a very gifted uh, intuitive artist. And my sister took me to her, and this was for my birthday one year. And so here is this beautiful Indian shaman with his gorgeous green eyes. And he has a medicine bag at his throat. And there is a um, sunflower, which of course we know kind of represents enlightenment, sun, God, you know. And then there's an eagle, uh, all seeing, all knowing with a scroll in his um, claw. And certainly that was described to me as like the gift that I received of the blueprint for the human spirit. But this shaman, in my vision that I had during this uh, 15 past life experience, he was trying to keep his tribe together. He knew what was coming. He was from South uh, West uh, in the part of the United States. And he was the spiritual leader and the healer and just a leader in general of his people and encouraged them to live in harmony with the earth. And in spite of the fact that he knew ultimately that they would be um, diminished, they would be left, he encouraged all of his uh, people in every way possible. So he was able to live consciously and compassionately. And the message that he brought, of course, the shift in consciousness was that to respect and sustain earth for future generations. So that was the message and the core shift in consciousness that I learned from this gentleman. Now, I had run into him a number of times in meditation. Once, I was um, um, in meditation, I went through a wormhole and was sucked back in time a thousand years, and I was sitting at a fire, um, cross-legged at a fire, smoking a peace pipe with others, and this uh, shaman tapped me on the shoulder and motioned for me to go with him. We were going on a journey up a mountain and there was no talking, but we walked and walked and walked up this mountain. And then we'd stop and rest. And then we'd go further up, up, up and further. And it was exhausting, but you know what? symbolically going up the mountain means it's going to a higher level of awareness. And we got to a certain point almost 
at the top of the mountain and we merged as one. And the idea of that revealed to me that our spirit guides and all of those who guide us are actually a part of us, that we know that they are a part of us and not separate from us so that when we get to a higher state of awareness, there is a sense of oneness that emerges. And mm -hmm. then on higher, I went to the top of this mountain and it was so bright and it was so light. The intensity of that a spiritual experience was so powerful. I knew I was in the presence of God and I couldn't speak and I could hardly breathe, but I just knew that I had been guided by this uh, American Indian shaman up to the highest peak of awareness. And another time I met up with him in a meditation and he gave me his medicine bag with all of the powers and all of the tools for healing and soul retrieval and whatever. Um, and so what a gift that was. But this was my experience um, with one past life that was uh, more conscious, a conscious co-creator. I find so, that to be um, you know, pretty uh, in sync because I'm uh, you know, thinking about this American Indian shaman and the shaman is a healer. Uh, yes. Someone who will heal you and then here you are in this present moment and you know you're a doctor and you're a healer exactly. and the merging you know that's uh, just absolutely profound and then to give you his medicine bag is yes you know I, i'm not really quite sure what to say on that like a hair on my arms is standing up because oh, that's I know. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like such a merger there and yes. such a conscious message right being yes. uh, sent to the future you know, mm -hmm. it's um it's, it's amazing. Thank you for sharing this great yes. stuff. Well, there is one other um, archetype that I experienced. Kathy, you can uh, take the uh, slides off. And about five days after I experienced this profound life-changing encounter with 15 past lives, I visit a friend who does uh, regressions and she's a therapist. And she says, well, would you like to do a regression? And at that point, I was so overwhelmed by everything that I'd experienced. I could hardly talk about it yet, but I said, oh, why not? You know, what's one more? And so she guided me back in time. And I was a child at the feet of Jesus when he said, let the children come to me for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in that moment, I knew what that meant. And I knew that this beloved child of God is the perfect archetype for the eternal realm in the blueprint for the human spirit. And there's only one because at that point we are uh, united as one. We are whole. And But this beautiful childlike image is perfect because in our spiritual path, we want so desperately to know oneness, to be pure joy, to be free of all of the um, judgments, uh, to be innocent again. And that is to be pure, loving, and joyful. That is the one thing that the one archetype that reflects the eternal realm of being in the blueprint for the human spirit. And this is how we learn how to express our divinity through our humanity by showing up every day as the love that we are, as the hands and the heart and the voice of God. So this is a beautiful way. These past life experiences, um, were so profound and touched me so deeply because I learned so much from them. And at that point, the blueprint for the human spirit shifted totally. It was no longer just an 
intellectual exercise, but it became a part of me. I had integrated it fully and deeply, and I knew from experience exactly what I had been learning over the years as a result of studying and receiving all these wonderful divine downloads. So this is how I feel we can gain the most from past life or from NDEs or from spiritually transformative experiences where we can look at it and, and discover a powerful message that helps us so that we truly can express the essence of our being, that we can live purposefully with compassion and we can create consciously and then we can show up as the beloved child of God and make a difference in the world in which we live. So that is the gift that I receive that I am so happy to share with uh, everyone. And hopefully one of these days I can write this book about all these archetypes because I think it would be a very powerful book. I'm a little busy at the moment, but I hope to do that someday. So Kathy and Omar, if you would like to come back. I think we're just going back and forth, back Many and buttons. forth. That's fun. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you very much, Dr. Girali. I, I have uh, just so, so many questions and I've uh, written them down. So, you know, I mean business when I do that. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's studying. He yeah, did his own. Yeah, I was just sitting here listening to you, and it, it's just so amazing. And as you were speaking, I just had, like, these plethora of questions just coming through me, and I was just so able to just type as many as I could down. But, uh, you know, let me hit you with some of them. Because this okay. is, um, you know, I find it extremely interesting because I'm a, a student of consciousness, and I'm trying to understand what consciousness is mm -hmm. and whether my body avatar is a antenna that is, you know, connected to consciousness and I experience that or, you know, is it inserted in me or, you know, are there over souls and kind of what have you. So when you were speaking, you know, and I was thinking of all of that and I wondered, you know, you mentioned, you know, your 15 past or present lives and they all are human and, you know, and then that really raised a lot of questions in my mind. It's like, okay, so if they're all human, I wonder if our conscious aspect has decided to um, merge with a human hive mind or a human oversoul. And then through that, you had these 15 experiences. And then that's what is being uh, relayed to you. And I wonder if there would be like other lives that would be like non-terrestrial that may you know, show up later or, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, why is it always like yes. earthling lives and not like uh, yes. you know, an Octurian or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that? Because I'm sure you've been all of those as well. <laughs> Probably. Infinite, but <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of that? Like, Well, I personally think that um, because it's through this human experience that we are evolving, Mm -hmm. that and that the blueprint for the human spirit is my gift to the universe. It was the gift to me and I'm giving it back to the universe so that I can live more consciously and compassionately and authentically. But at the same time, uh, you know, it has structure which appeals to the left brain <laughs> and it helps us to make sense of things. And sometimes it helps to do that because when we have such profound experiences like NDEs or STEs, it is, we, we want to integrate the message into our way of being. And so for me, because I had the blueprint, they fit there. And um, it, it's amazing to me that that it was so perfect, um, perfectly conveyed the message of the blueprint mm -hmm. and the gifts and the shifts in consciousness that we need to make in order to 
show up as the hands and the heart and the voice of God as the beloved, and then we can truly make a difference. So, you know, I'm sure there are so many, anybody else that had experiences that would be very different from mine, but because I'm here my, and my passion and my purpose is to share the blueprint, that's what came to me. Yeah, I, um, I, I kind of figured that as well, because, you know, if we are, you know, let's say interacting with a matrix in, mm -hmm. in this environment, and then to get a download of something, you know, that doesn't serve us in this particular matrix, then you're probably not going to get that download of, to make this experience more viable, like you had that merger mm -hmm. with the shaman, right? That wouldn't happen if you were like, so say, Octarian or something else. So it's only reflecting... Exactly you know, within this experience to make your current experience mm. and your past or present experience into a more, you know, unified, right? Um, yes. Human experience, right? So like lessons learned mm -hmm. kind of thing. Can I add something yes. here? Because I think what yes. happened is the blueprint as she was getting it, um, she had the pieces of the puzzle and she knew where they all went but she didn't embody the knowledge mm -hmm. in each one of the quadrants until she experienced those lifetimes. And then right. there was an experience, a physical, emotional, uh, a cosmic experience that had helped her be that quadrant mm -hmm. and meet people in a compassionate way that are still in each one of those places and help guide them to the higher mind. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm getting chills just thinking about it because I can't imagine. <laughs> I, I mean, people talk about going crazy doing stuff like this. I mean, that they walk around talking <laughs> to themselves for a while. I mean, you experienced all those lifetimes all at once. Oh, yes. And you knew where what they meant. That's the thing. Is mm -hmm. because yes. most of the time we have these experiences, and we don't. It takes us a long time to figure out what they meant. Especially to uh, interpret or to feel the uh, energetic sense of the moments, right? Like the sacrifice that was happening, the feeling of betrayal. Right, that energetic feeling of being moved through time and space to experience in the present, I found that to be just uh, phenomenal, right? Because uh, yes. that really shows us that oh, yes. everything is connected like a spider web. And regardless of where it happens, if you're connected, you can still feel mm -hmm. that, right? And, and, and I was, you know, and I'm wondering as well is, you know, are there like any more lives that, uh, that you might be? <laughs> aware of that uh, you just simply haven't like come around to acknowledging or you know i'm just wondering because 15 <laughs> right and then maybe that was enough of a download and they're going to wait that a little bit and you with like <laughs> another 15 20 and <laughs> who knows the blueprint may evolve again you know because it didn't start off with with this big it started mm -hmm. simple mind body spirit triangle but it kept emerging and uh, certainly, I've, I've felt at times that there was another level uh, at which might emerge at some point. And um, I've gotten a glimpse of it, but I haven't really um, received the full impact of what that might be or felt it. And certainly that is the difference between someone telling you about a past life or somebody experiencing it firsthand mm -hmm. where uh, that the emotion was so deep that that is what I believe makes the difference. I mean, when I was, um, I mean, I was a, a slave that was repressed and uh, I was catatonic. I mean, I was like a uh, Joan of Arc type um, character. It was one of the archetypes, the martyred saint. Uh, a gay gifted artist. I mean, there were so many of them. There was a Galileo type person who was hung for uh, telling his truth. I mean, those are some of the things I experienced I mean, in that hour and a half. So it, it truly was perfect mm -hmm. for me and for helping me to explain the blueprint because I integrated it. 
And so many healers have said they've been, they felt um, afraid to come out with their superpowers and their gifts because they remember being burned at the stake mm -hmm. or all of these things. Imagine, I mean, Pamela's had all of that and more. And what it, I, honestly, I can't explain this any better, but she can meet you and, and hold your hand through whatever one of those um, human condition uh, places we all are in, because we all have these um, storylines that are embedded in our consciousness that that's not really who we are. We are mm -hmm. a divine spark, but we've got these layers and she cleared them all off and she's still sane. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I know I wouldn't be. <laughs> no, it's so cool. It's so cool. And this stuff is so um, high frequency. Honestly, you guys, if you go and get her free book on the drgirali.com, uh, Pamela Dr. Pamela Girali.com uh, site, what you'll find is that it'll all make sense. And you will, if you're sensitive, you will feel the energy of it because it's truth. It, and there's no ego in it. It's all a gift to humanity. Mm -hmm. I was going to say about the uh, the blueprint is that nothing is ever set in stone. And uh, as it evolves, right, you know, it's going to get better and better because everything evolves in generally, regardless yes. of what it is. Um, let me hit you with another question, Dr. Girali. Um, which one should I get you with? Because I just have so many on here. Well, I have to okay. do this again, probably. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let me let me do this one. Uh, I'll do one of mine, and I'll take a couple questions from the audience, and then we'll uh, call it a day. Um, okay, so I've been watching a lot of uh, Unsolved Mysteries uh, lately, especially from the 90s, because they actually, you know, talked about real things, uh, NDEs and you know, UFOs and things like that. There was truth at one point on uh, on on TV. And lately that I've been watching, I saw this one boy that um, said that, uh, you know, he had a previous life and things like that. And in the town that he was born in, he began to identify people and uh, saying that, you know, hey, Matt, how's it going? Or, hey, Joan, how's it going? Things like that. And, uh, you know, and he was picking out pictures and saying, that's me, that's me. So, you know, my question to you is that, you know, some of these have happened in the time when photography was available to the human being. And have you ever done like any research into these individuals to see if there's like photographic, um, you know, right. records available and you can look at them and, and then have that visual and say, oh, my God, that's me. Things like that. Have you or considered <laughs> doing something like that? Well, I was informed by another um, metaphysical intuitive person about the uh, joyful dancer and she was also an ice skater and i looked her up because that was in the um, 1800s 1820s russian and um, um, so i i tried to find her and uh, i haven't really done any of the ancestral things because to me it's all symbolic i think each of the their archetypes, they may be my personal experiences, but even if when you look at the stories, there are three or four different archetypes in each story. You know, for instance, the impoverished mother has the children and the husbands and the location where she was, which isn't far. Actually, um, Appalachia, I was raised in the uh, foothills of the um, mountains of the Appalachia, kind of in the transition zone even. So, uh, you know, there's connections there. I, I felt a familiarity when I was in Japan walking on a, a trail uh, and there was an exiled leader uh, that was a part of this, or I, I felt the presence there. So there have been many times when I felt um, a connection with a location and, and with a story, but I truly believe that we all have within us each of these archetypes. Uh, it's part of us. It's part of how we grow and learn. You know, we're all uh, children. Uh, we're all students. We all have to learn how to love ourselves. We all have to learn how to stand up for ourselves so that that's what the slave had to do. 
And um, then the catatonic girl needed to reconnect with her herself, with her soul. She was, you know, disconnected, you know. And then there were people like this glutton who um, had everything. And he was from Rome and he um, was wealthy beyond belief because his parents had passed. And so he inherited everything. And he would sit looking out of his doorway at the poor people walking by and they would hold out their hand and ask for something and he'd throw food and smash food, you know, and he didn't do anything purposefully, purposeful. He had a chance to make a difference and to, to do something meaningful and he didn't. And he ate himself. He was like Jabba the Hutt. He ate himself <laughs> out of house and home and he became one of the wandering, you know, because he didn't pursue his higher purpose. He didn't live you know, with any sense of meaning. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how in each story where we have opportunities as individuals to learn from them, because um, when we shift, make a shift, integrate the message, so to speak, then we truly can be all that we were born to be. Mm -hmm. I really so like that. <laughs> I think that's uh, one of the questions from the audience kind of really falls into what you're saying is, uh, you know, Melinda says, uh, I wonder if this relates to people having split personalities. Oh, right? uh, yeah. Oh. Can you hit that up for us? Well, I haven't thought too much about it, you know, as a nurse and with a master's in public health, you know, I've studied a lot about that. And um, certainly people with split personalities are split from reality um, in uh, many ways, but I think the whole idea with the work that I do with the spiritual blueprinting intuitive healings that I do is to bring it all together to make sense of it and to help people to heal from past traumas. You know, I have had to heal from being a victim in a variety of ways. I've had to heal from trying to do everything myself to, you know, uh, succeed, you know, with ego effort. And I've had to learn how to then uh, uh, be the vessel and allow uh, the work to flow through me uh, so that I am in partnership with the divine, so to speak. So I think we all have those lessons to learn. But in terms of um, <laughs> feeling schizophrenic, so to speak, with all of these uh, past lives being separate. The difference is knowing. And people that have mental illness usually aren't aware that they are uh, mentally ill, or some of them are, but it, when they're um, deeply um, separate from their self, so to speak, from their higher self, then it's, it's more challenging to mm -hmm. um, treat and, and to bring them into coherence yeah um, so i really feel like she had the experience because it was the only way she could be a compassionate healer mm -hmm. because if if she wouldn't have integrated all of those um aspects because all of us have every single one of those aspects and it really wasn't like a split personality. It, it, we all are all of that. Yeah. And, and so, so what <laughs> happened is she integrates it, and then it's almost like the NDE um, uh, storyline where they come out with superpowers mm -hmm. after they it activates. Hit it. It, it activates because because those were the things that needed to be all integrated in order for her to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. So that's why she's an amazing healer too. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. And, you know, I was just wondering, because when that split personality, Melinda's question came up, I thought, you know, what if like an archetype in time traveled or what if they're like somehow connected, like, um, you know, like quantum entanglement? right to where you know when one does something the other one feels it and i wonder if those can become merged in someone who has split personality and because we're, we don't really fully understand that we pass it off as mental illness but you know in reality there's something much more happening at a much deeper level kind of like schizophrenia where you know mm -hmm. i believe the person would be 
you know, tapped into a higher frequency. And because, you know, they might be, you know, uh, psychics to a great advanced deal to where they're picking up thoughts from everyone. And because that hasn't been nurtured and matured within them and just being placed on, you know, yes. a mental illness. And, uh, you know, so we you know, mm -hmm. put them on drugs. So I wonder if the split personality and all these other mental illnesses is kind of the same thing. But we just simply don't understand it, and you know we don't have the we don't. you know the, the the awareness, so to say, to nurture that mm -hmm. type of gift at birth, right? And then because people like that in the in the past yeah. were oracles and uh, you know advisors to kings and generals and things like that, right? And now it's like the totally opposite. So excellent question. So something <laughs> to really make the brain go quickly quickly <laughs> what, what we're talking about too is that we're going through these times right now where we want to integrate as much of these soul fragments and that's really what happened is those were all aspects that integrated and so what happens like when there's a brain functioning a lot of times that's an electrical problem within the system that's a little bit different than this. Um, it may be an awakening gone wrong because a lot of people awaken, they have spontaneous awakenings and they end up losing everything and walk the street. So that, that is a possibility. But what, what this is really different because it's, um, it's like the shamanic uh, soul retrieval. Mm -hmm. is what she did and then it okay. allowed her to then help others do that very very good point uh let's take our last question yes. and this okay. is a very interesting question uh is coming from uh, his majesty uh king david james stormbrone and uh, he says uh, dr grelly since we are all immortal beings I know we all have immortal names, which are different from our current physical names. How would one confirm what their immortal name is? I'm sorry, the connection is a little uh, bad and I didn't hear the question. I don't know whether you could type it to me or not, but um, I couldn't quite capture what you said in that moment because you're kind of frozen. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll, and maybe I'll do I'm it the again. frozen one. <laughs> okay. I'll do it again. Uh, it says, uh, Dr. Girelli, since we are all immortal beings, I know we all have, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess the connection's gone bad. You know, for me, uh, you know, just to answer that question, um, that again is at a level of separation to where you know, you're individualizing yourself and separating yourself from the source, from you know the actual consciousness. And these names, these titles and tags that we have here in this density, you know, are just simply that labels, right? They're just simply labels. And I don't think we have like, you know, individual names that are, you know, beyond this um, you know, 4D reality when, uh, you know, we're, when we're in our spiritual, natural, you know, ways, right? Like if I'm energy, my energy wouldn't really have a name or an identity. I just would be, you know, a field of information within that infinite stream of consciousness. So let's hear Dr. Girelli's thoughts on this. Uh, so uh, David, uh, King David James says, uh, Dr. Girelli, since we are all immortal beings, I know we all have immortal names, which are different from our current physical names. How would one confirm what their immortal name is? Well, I was once given a name of Lucida, <laughs> which is the brightest star in the constellation, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. And, you know, on one hand, I think names are important, but I think the name that is of greatest importance is I am. And so we can uh, ask for and uh, write the name th that are given to us or use those, but they haven't been important in my life to okay. come up with names for each of these people yet. I'm sure they do have names and I'm sure that um, 
that we have other, I mean, I know of a lot of people who've changed their names. In fact, two, two gals that have been friends of mine in the past uh, had the same name, Pamela Sue, and they both changed their names. And I'm like, well, I kind of like Pamela Sue, so I'll stick with it, you know. <laughs> but um, so um, I don't think we have to change our name. I think we don't have to strive to be something we're not. We just Perfect. have to realize the essence of our being and embrace that and express that and uh, express our divinity through our humanity. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, if names help in that process that show that we are evolving, great, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, I, I like that. And, you know, and on the other hand, for me, you know, like you said, it names really, it doesn't matter much. Um, you know, it's like a tree um a cat the lamp the microphone you know and that's really it's a, just a label and a title to identify ourselves while we are in this physical being but once we go into our you know immortal being our infinite being you know i don't think we would have uh, any type of label to identify ourselves because we are all that there is ever was and ever will be because we are uh, infinite there's no need to place a label on infinity because then we're creating these identity um you know blocks to where we identify ourselves as one and then lock ourselves within that and then our brain intellect can you know get busy defending that and then we begin to ignore the uh, the memory of the body because the body has more memory than the brain does and uh, so i'm not sure uh, whether we have an immortal name or not but uh you know it's a good question, and uh, maybe we do, maybe we don't. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out one day. But uh, thank you very much, Dr. Giraldi. I uh, so appreciate your wisdom thank and you. you know the uh, the presentation you shared with us is very profound. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it again because uh, you know, like I said, I was just too busy, so busy writing <laughs> notes and. <laughs> well, well, or you can have her on again because you'll hear there's so much more to this that yeah. could so many people it's really um a uh roadmap to yeah yeah i've seen dr Girelli on uh, your show kathy and every yep. time she's on I'm, mm -hmm. I'm watching same with uh calvin klein and peter panagor oh, calvin klein yeah Kel some... calvin <laughs> yeah amazing ben. amazing guy i love that guy <laughs> <laughs> It's not a designer. So um, let's. Uh, so so while we're uh, closing off, uh, let's talk about the uh, Ions Conference, Kathy. Okay. That is uh, coming up on August the thirty first to September the fourth in Salt Lake City. Uh, right. It is a uh, in person and also a uh, virtual conference. So uh, you know, I'll throw that to you, Kathy. Maybe you want to share your screen, and oh, we'll sure. have that up there. And as you guys know, Dr. Girali is going to be speaking at the conference. She's uh, on an eight thousand mile journey to uh, to this conference. So uh, you know, it's uh, it's very commendable. I like that. Uh, made a whole thing out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So basically what um, we're talking about and uh, everyone, whoops, everyone this week is a um, presenter or a, a gifter or an exhibitor or um, in, in uh, Pamela's case, she's going to be presenting a class during um, the week on Friday. And um, basically what it is, is it's an opportunity for this wonderful group of people to be all together with open hearts these are the the presenters the keynotes uh, that are all there and um if you go and watch some of my uh conscious business zone you'll see i've um interviewing quite a few of these people this month and it's also on my youtube channel but here it's a four-day conference and um and here are some other photos of other people. The, the theme is timeless oneness, the luminous message of near death and other spiritually transformative experiences. So um, we want you to uh, everyone to know about it because um, the opportunity is if you are not going to be able to come in in person, you can watch and uh, purchase this as part of a uh, online 
service in Neogar and Portals to Ascension are the producers of the online portion. And they've done, they've helped us for the past two years. So, um, and the, once you get the online, you don't have to um, stay glued to your computer for four days. You can watch it for, I think they said 180 days afterwards. So Six you months. can dinner to each one of these presentations. <laughs> um, in person, there's four different rooms and four different streams of people. So uh, like over a hundred speakers. And um, this organization has been in existence for 40 years. So this is really a huge opportunity to be open hearted with people and to learn about the unseen. There's research. This isn't just, you know, quantum physics. Let's see what they come up with or people explaining the paranormal that that are schizophrenic or are separated from reality. This is real stuff that is uh, documented and mystical. And it's a portal for all of us to have the language and to have the experience as well. So, mm -hmm. so I'm so excited. It's very, it's all heart-based. Right on, I like that. And uh, thank you very much, Kathy. And thank you very much, Dr. Girelli. I uh, totally appreciate uh, your guys' coming on to watch us talk and uh sharing and uh you know, cause that's what it's all about is to raise our awareness as the uh the new earth is uh being manifested by all of our thoughts and all of our heart space and all of our love and that's what really it's all about is to help wake people up and is to help people remember and uh it's to uh help uh just ourselves as well because the more we understand ourselves the more we understand the nature of reality the more we understand our reality the more you know we're aware and we can pay more attention to our surroundings to our loved ones our children grandchildren it's just uh beneficial overall so uh thank you thank you so much and uh guys uh subscribe to uh, Kathy's uh, YouTube channel as well. The links, all the links are in the description of this video. Yeah. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, a great lineup still coming up uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, today we, uh, well, we started off with uh, Trisha Barker. And uh, today we had uh, Dr. Girali. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's show is going to be a lot of fun. I like uh, Peter. Yes. So uh, Peter Panagor is going to be on tomorrow. But I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting Jose Hernandez. Uh, we're almost neighbors. Maybe we can do an in-person interview and uh, looking forward to uh, Brick Grove coming up. And then uh, Caroline Chang, really looking forward to that one as well. And uh, to cap the week off with a panel discussion on Saturday with all of our speakers from uh, the week of uh, our series. Uh, so it's going to be uh, tons of fun and uh, really looking forward to this. And as well, got a couple of double headers coming up this week and uh kathy has like uh 11 shows uh, <laughs> all booked which are coming up so uh, a lot of content to uh, learn from and uh to raise awareness from so thank you kathy thank you well again i just want everyone to realize how powerful they really are and then have some access to resources so that they can experience it. I mean, what Dr. Girali has done and what she offers is tremendous. Each one of these people is a, such a gift. So uh, I'm just excited, I'm getting chills. I, I just think <laughs> we're, we're doing it. We're, do, we're sharing the way to not be in judgment, to be in our heart and create the world we really wanna have. That's right. I like that. Uh, because when you judge and you point fingers, you know, remember, there's always three pointing back. <laughs> and, uh, you're uh, really, you know, judging yourself. So uh, let's not do that. Uh, let's not judge yeah. ourselves because, uh, you know, as it says, a projection of you, right? Uh, we're all, all of us are projections of one another because we are a projection of the infinite the uh the source the heart the love so uh, thank you very much everyone for being here today i appreciate you uh give this video a like and uh, consider sharing with friends and family with whom you'll think will uh, benefit from uh, this stream and uh, stay in love and uh, be in love with yourselves uh, don't forget to say i love you 
as you walk into the bathroom early in the morning and uh, give yourself some gratitude as well because when you do that it works on all planes uh here and beyond and uh you know it's very fitting for this uh series that we're doing here that we say that because love goes beyond it has no barriers uh, so stay hydrated on these very hot days and uh, you know let's uh, send our uh you know, thoughts and energy to uh, people that are uh, suffering in the droughts all over the world, because uh, you know, let's let's uh, you know wish for rain, guys, to the areas that really need it, and yeah. uh, let's see if we can manipulate the weather ourselves and not the governments. So we will see you next time. I love yeah. you guys very much. Many respects. Maybe at the end of the video, if you like, you know, please uh, on both of our channels, uh, hop down and uh, leave us some thoughts in the comments that really helps with the uh, algorithm of uh, youtube as you guys know so uh, yes. thank you very much and uh, love you guys any final words kathy before i no, just so grateful just so grateful so grateful for your loving audience so grateful for um all these amazing speakers that um do all of this work for free i mean it's really remarkable how dedicated people are to um to making a difference in the world. So so please share and and thank you all. Thank you really. High high fives, good vibes. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.